some of these strategies you probably have never heard of. So I will need you to have an open mind. Do you think you really own your home when you've got a mortgage on it? Who do you think really owns your property when you have a mortgage on your property? It's the bank. So there is this obsession about ownership and, and buying property. Look, if you don't believe me, just stop paying your mortgage for the next four months. You know exactly who owns your property. And it's not you, my friend. It's the bank. So um, it's not all about ownership. So some of the strategies I'm going to be sharing with you will involve not using any bank loans. It's based on be buying property at below market value. So again, this property here. You see how practice makes perfect? Look at this house. It's so beautiful compared to the first picture that I drew. This is so awesome. So BMV, the property is worth, let's say the market value is worth 300 Thousand. Look how neat this is. Now, I negotiate with the seller, right? I negotiate with the seller. The seller is willing to sell for two hundred and let's say I'm getting uh, two hundred fifty thousand. So it's not a huge discount. I mean, it's just like fifteen percent discount. So I'm getting an instant discount of fifty fifty grand now. For a lot of people to make money now, you want to make this money quickly, you will have to buy this property for 250 and then sell it for three, 300 to make the 50 grand. And the problem is, it's the finance, right? But what if I say to you that it's not necessary for you to buy before you can sell? Now, a couple of things I'll say, say to, to you. Uh, on this is number one, I am negotiating with the seller that the seller agrees to receive 250,000 and the seller would not have a problem that any money that I make above 250,000 would belong to me. All right. It doesn't belong to the seller. It belongs to me. The seller has to be happy with it. And in fact, I'll say to the seller, if you think you can get more money for it by selling, selling property yourself, by all means, go and do it yourself. But the chance is, a lot of people can't. Maybe time is a constraint. So I'll say to them, look, anything I make above 250000 is going to belong to me. Now, the second thing is, although this property is worth 300000 300, for most people, when they look at property, they look at prices. So if this property was to go on the, on the market, let's say it, it goes to a, a portal like Rightmove, it, the price will probably be somewhere like 330000 is always inflated, right? This is what most people will look at. This is what they see, right? But this is where we, this is the, the actual agreement that I have with the seller. Now, also I'll say to the seller that, can you give me some exclusivity to sell this property for you for 250? Let's say you give me three months. And what we do is instead of me buying it, I will get the seller to sign a contract. Oh, I've got a nice color here. A contract. That gives me exclusivity within three months to sell the property and they will get 250 and any money that I make on top would belong to me. Now, so what I do is I will immediately try to sell it to someone who wants a good deal. Now, most people will see that this property is worth 300 30,000. What if I now find another buyer and I would say, okay, well, whoever has got the money ready, you can buy it for 290,000. But you have to buy this very, very quickly because I know I've only got three months. You have to have finances ready. Do you think there will be a lot of first time buyers, a lot of investors who will just dive in, rip your arm off to want to buy this property? that they think is worth 330 for 290, yes or no? What do you think? Because in their mind, in their mind, the property is worth 330 and they, they, they're making 40 grand in equity. But for me, the difference, how much do I make in this deal? If I can sell it for 290, how much do I make? I make, my contract price with the seller is 250K, all right, 250K, and I'm selling it for, 290k. How much do I make? Massive 40,000 pounds, euros, dollars that will go into my bank account within three months. And that money will go into my bank account 
on the day the buyer completes on the purchase. And this last strategy is based on, let's say this person, okay, this house, right? Now, this house, so there is an owner, so this owner, this owner who lives in this property. So this person has a mortgage on the property. So let's say the property is worth 300,000 today. And there's a mortgage that they're paying um, every single month is let's say a thousand thousand pounds a month. And this person goes to work every single day and, and pays the mortgage to the bank, All right? And what happens one day, this person, this poor fella has lost his job. Can I use he um, or she? Well, let's say use he, no, no, no gender, sort of uh, discussion here, just, just, just a person has, has lost their job. I'm going to use plural, the, their job. And if this person can't get an income, what, what happens to this mortgage payment? It's going to rack up with the bank. So they're going to default on the loan. So let's say one month, this person doesn't pay the bank. This person will own the bank a thousand. Second month would be 2000. Third month would be 3000. How long do you think it would take for the bank to come and knock on the door and say, hey, we're taking the property back because um, you've defaulted on your loan. Probably about three months, all right? Three, four months. It won't be long and it's terribly distressing for, for the owner. It's very, very stressful. Stress. Ooh, very stressful. And this person is, is facing repossession. Now, I want you to remember uh, and learn this principle of assets versus liabilities uh, versus assets versus liabilities. In this case, is this property a liability or an asset to this owner? It's a liability. But in now, I want you to remember that because whether a property is an asset or liability is based on someone's circumstances. Not every property is an asset. In this case, a property is a liability. You know, people have this notion that all properties are assets. That's not true. It really depends on the C, which is a circumstance. But I want you to remember that someone's liability could be your asset because your circumstance is different. So in this deal, what I'll do is I'll say to the seller, look, let me, let me pay this every single month. I will pay the bank on your behalf but what I'll do, I will immediately rent it out. I'll say to the owner that anything that I, I rent out, any profit would belong to me. It's a bit like the last deal, the last strategy. I'll say to the owner, look, I will promise that this is paid and you can go away, find somewhere else to live that is cheaper. You can't afford this. Let me take care of your bank, your mortgage, and, uh, and I'll rent the property out and I will probably refurbish the property. I might do some work to it. I'll market it better. And any rental profit would belong to me. So straight away, I will have a contract, an agreement with this owner. And I'll also say to the owner this. Now, your property today is worth 300000 So how about for me to take over your liability? What I need you to do is to grant me, uh, grant me, an exclusivity, a contract that will allow me to buy the property fixed for 300K over a 10 year period. Let's say the 10 years left, right? So it's anytime within the next 10 years, I have the right to buy this property for 300K. So let's say six years from now, the property is worth, how much do you think it will be? So five, 10, 10 years from now, the property is probably going to be worth six, 600,000. And I will buy it for 300,000. And how much do I make in the deal? 300,000. So that means I can buy this property in the future at below the market value because the market value would have gone up to 600,000. And in the meantime, I'm getting rental income and uh, it's all based on a contract without me using any money. So in this case, I actually control the property without using any mortgage finance for the next 10 years. I will alleviate the seller's um, current situation and the seller can move away. I will make money. And when I buy the property, don't forget, 
the seller's mortgage would have been paid off quite a lot and the seller can make money as well. So this is based on the concept of control. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification and I'll see you in the next video.